What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the awesome paneling add-on for Rhino called Paneling Tools. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Paneling Tools is a very powerful tool that you can download and install inside of Rhino. And so basically what it does is it allows you to create different panels from points inside of your 3D space. There's also some grasshopper functionality, which we're not really gonna focus on in this video, but uh, we can talk about that in a future video. But to start off, let's talk about how to install this add-on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to jump over into Rhino and we're gonna load the package manager. And I'm just loading it from the what's new in version seven window right here. You can also just type in package manager and hit the enter key. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up your pa package manager and you can search for paneling tools. So I'm just gonna type in panel. And in this case, you wanna click on the option for paneling tools right here. And you wanna make sure that you install that. And so what the, once that's installed, you're gonna have a drop down right here where you can start creating paneling systems. And so at its core, what paneling tools does is it basically uses control points or a grid in order to create a 3D surface. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna focus on how to create a grid. Cause there's a bunch of different ways that we can do this. Um, we'll stay pretty high level for this video, but let's say that we just wanted a simple grid in here. So I'm just gonna open up paneling tools. Notice how there's an option in here for create paneling grid. And there's multiple different ways you can do this. So you can do this just by creating an array or a polar array. You can use extrusions of curves in order to create an array, as well as using points from a surface. Um, so you can use shapes in order to create those points and then create panels from those. In this case, let's just create a simple array. Right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna set a base point. So I'm gonna click right here to set my first base point, and that's going to drop this into Rhino right here. So basically what it's done is it's created a grid of points inside of the Rhino space right here. And so notice how you, you have different options in here, right? So you have like a U number. That's gonna allow you to set the number of points. So if I was to set this to like five, notice how we're gonna get five here. You can also set the V number. So let's say I wanted this to be five, I could type in five here again. So you can just click on these and then type in values in order to adjust them. So set those both back to 10. There's also a spacing. So that'll set how closely these are spaced. So if I typed in one and a half on my U spacing, then notice how my spacing gets bigger right here. We're gonna leave this at one for right now. And so notice how this is in here diagonally. Well, what you can do to fix that is you can set your Z offset, right? So right now, this is doing a Z offset. It's going down by a value of one for every point. If you were to set your Z offset to a zero like this, notice how it's gonna place this in here flat. So you can kind of adjust the way that your grid looks using these different functions. You can also set if all of your points are going to be grouped or not just by coming in here and clicking the yes or no. I'm gonna click no just so we can click in here and look at the individual points real quick. But if I hit the enter key, what that's gonna do is that's going to create a grid of points. And notice how if I click on each one of these points right here, they're basically gonna be in here as objects and each one of the points is gonna be given a value. So notice how right now, for example, the name of this point is G11. That means this point is located at one down and one over. So over here, this should be G99, and it is. So you can see how as you look at these, these are all named with different values, and this grid is going to use those values in order to create your surfaces inside of Rhino. And so let's actually create a surface from this grid. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go into the paneling tools function right here, and we're just gonna select the first option panel 2D grid. And so it's going to ask me to select my paneling points for my grid. So I'm just gonna drag my mouse button across here, and then I'm gonna hit the enter key. It's gonna, it's gonna then give me the option to select a base surface or poly surface. At the moment, we're just gonna hit enter. Um, we don't wanna worry too much about that for right now. So I'm gonna hit the enter key. Notice what that's gonna do is that's going to create a grid based on my points right here. So notice how, first off, there's an option here for different patterns. So if I click on these, notice how it's going to do it, use a different pattern in order to create my paneling. 
right? So there's multiple different options in here for different things you can do with this. There's a lot of fun possibilities that come along with this. So you've got a bunch of other options in here too, like add edges, add faces, um, add flat faces, other things like that. We're not gonna worry too much about that for right now. And so in this case, um, cause it'll create your edges and your faces as separate things in here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say no to edges and I'm just gonna leave the faces in here like this. And so what that's gonna do is that is going to create a panel system made of faces that follows along with my points like this. So you can use this in order to really quickly create a panel system based on these points. So let's do something a little bit more interesting now. So let's say that we were to take these points and we were to move them. And I'm just gonna select them and I'm just gonna use the soft move tool. So soft move right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to do a proportional edit in here. So I'm just going to set this with a radius like this. And then we're just gonna move some of these up like this. So basically what we've done is we've just done a proportional edit of this grid where these points got moved a lot, these points got moved a little. But now, notice how we still have a grid of points in here. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna select those points. Under paneling tools, we wanna just do the same thing where we create a panel from the 2D grid like this. We're gonna hit the enter key. And so this gives us a really interesting result. Right, so let's say we were to adjust our pattern right here to maybe like a wave pattern or really there's a bunch of different options in here. Maybe we'll do the hexagon pattern for right now. But notice how what we can do is we can set that value and then hit the enter key. And what that's gonna do is that's actually going to create a panel based on those points in that location. So you can see how this would be a very valuable tool for creating complex surfaces from those grids of points like this. All right, so up to this point, we've talked about using the points in order to create a grid, right? But let's say that we didn't want to create a grid. What we wanted to do is we wanted to create an object that's bent along these points, right? So let's start with a two-dimensional object like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna start by selecting our points again, but this time in our paneling tools, we're gonna go to a paneling from grid and we're gonna do a custom 2D. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow, that's gonna ask us to select a base surface or poly surface, um, or if there is none, we can do something else instead. In this case, we're gonna use a curve. So we're just gonna hit enter because we don't have a surface. So the next thing it's gonna ask is for us to select our custom curves and points. Well, in this case, we're just gonna click on this curve right here. We're gonna hit the enter key. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna show us a little image of how our object will be copied in here. So notice how, for example, it's basically saying, okay, with, within these points, this circle is going to be placed within the points like this. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter for yes. What that's going to do is that's going to take these curves and it's actually going to bend them using our grid right here. So we can use this in order to take shapes and make them follow along with the surface. And so there's also an option in here to do this with the 3D. And so let's say we have a torus like this one. And we wanna bend that along our 3D grid. Well, in this case, what we need to do is we're gonna actually need to give this a little bit more information because this is actually going to take our points and it's also gonna generate a thickness based on something that we give it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these points on the grid. I'm gonna type in group right here. So that way they're grouped, but then I'm going to make another copy of this down here. So I'm just gonna drag down and hit the Alt key to create a copy. And so if you look at this, notice how you've basically got a three-dimensional grid at this point, right? So instead of just having a two-dimensional grid with points like this, you could now take this and say, okay, within each one of these, there's like a little square that has some thickness in here. Well, we're gonna use that in order to bend this shape along this surface right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our paneling tools, and this time we wanna select the option for panel custom 3D. So when we select that, it's gonna ask for our first bounding grid. That's gonna be our top grid right here. Then we're gonna hit the enter key. Now we're gonna select the second bounding grid right here. Then I'm gonna hit the enter key again. So basically now what I've done is I've given this some 3D information that it can use in order to bend our object in a 3D space. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter key because I don't have bounding surfaces. And it's gonna ask me to select my objects. In this case, that's gonna be the object that it wants to put inside of our grid right here. And then I'm gonna hit the enter key. 
And so again, notice how what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me where it thinks those points are for this object. In this case, I'm good with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take those meshes and notice how what it does is it kind of deforms them and stretches them to fit them within this grid. And so let's go ahead and let's move our grid out of the way. But notice what that did is that came in here and this that actually took these objects and it basically placed one of them within each one of the 3D grid spaces and then it deformed them to fit. You can use this to do some really interesting things with shapes inside of Rhino. All right, so there's a massive amount of functionality that we can check out within this tool. So there will be future tutorials on this. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If there's something you have questions about, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.